The Max Planck Campus Tübingen. Innovations and interdisciplinary research. A place for cooperation and a place of endless possibilities for scientists from all over the globe. The campus, that's four institutes. At the Max Planck Institute for Intelligent Systems, we want to understand autonomous systems and use this knowledge to design the AI of the future. What makes us perceive, decide, act and learn? These are questions we examine at the Max Planck Institute for Biological Cybernetics. And at the Max Planck Institute for Developmental Biology and the Friedrich Miescher Laboratory, we gain insight into cellular and evolutionary processes. Our campus is growing. I've been here five years now, and what's really impressed me about this campus is how dynamic the place is and just how much it's changed and how much it's going to change over the next five years as well. I really like the interdisciplinarity and the diversity of this campus, both internationally and in terms of scientific disciplines. I used to work back there in a biological institute studying biological intelligence and now we started a new institute where we are trying to build intelligent systems. What I love about the campus is uh, wonderful colleagues but also that we are embedded in this wonderful city of Tübingen. The Max Planck Institute for Developmental Biology our five departments, our free research groups and our colleagues in the Friedrich Miescher Laboratory next door, we are all motivated by the quest to understand one thing, the origin of life. So here at the Institute, um, we are really taking a holistic view of all of biology. Ideally, we want to understand what's going on on the planet, out here from the atom all the way to entire ecosystems. We need diverse people here at the Institute because you need to start with a diverse set of ideas to be successful. We're limited in what we can study only by our own imagination and I think we really live that here, right? We really pursue um, questions that we're intellectually curious about and that is a very wonderful thing to be able to do and I think that the people who do this here appreciate that and live that excitement. Ruth Lay and her team explore the relationship between gut microbiome and host. So what we're really interested in finding out in my department is just how gut bacteria and the other organisms in the gut have co-evolved and adapted to humans. And so we look at this from a couple different ways. If you look at people around the world and you know that people spread out of Africa and colonized into Asia and into the Americas and into the Pacific areas and so on, um, can you see patterns that their gut bacteria went with them? And can we see that today? At this point, you know, we've been here five years, we've built up the resources, we've built up the labs, we've built up the expertise, we've built up uh, the training, and it feels like finally we're in this, this Saturn V rocket that's just, just starting to take off. Um, they're doing amazing things. Just like Gillian Waters, she works on the connection between microbiome and adiposity. So I'm really interested in how the gut microbiome directly modulates host metabolism and physiology. To investigate direct effects of the microbiome, we use germ-free mice so we can have a really nice controlled environment to look at a complex phenotype such as adiposity by controlling what they're eating, so we can then better directly see how the gut microbiome is influencing this complex phenotype. Gillian Waters could not work without the Genome Center. With throughput of more than 119,000 samples per year, it's one of the most important central facilities at the Institute. In Susanna Coelho's department, it's all about a very mysterious group of organisms. So the algae are uh, organisms that are very different from uh, animals or plants, or specifically the brown algae. So they are a group of, of organisms that has evolved totally independently. They show this large diversity of types 
of sexual systems. We don't know almost anything about how they reproduce. So we became interested in, in, this, in this brown algae because they are very, very important in the intertidal zone, you know, in coastal areas, because they, are, they form this sort of forest, so they are very important for uh, biodiversity. We try to understand what are the genes that are involved in these processes, how, uh, how you build an algae, uh, because these organisms can be like 60 meters high. They are, they are really complex in terms of, of morphology, and they will start from one single tiny cell in the ocean. So uh, we find this fascinating. One of the four Friedrich Miescher groups is the Lab for Structural Biochemistry of meiosis. Magdalena Fierle uses cryo-electro-microscopy to make proteins visible. Important for the research of group leader John Weir. We're interested in understanding the molecular mechanisms in meiosis. And what makes everything happen within a cell is fundamentally the proteins that enable these different, uh, these different events to occur within, within a cell. The way that we want to understand the, the role is by um, actually rebuilding these protein machines outside of the cell. Um, but really, we're also very interested in understanding the three-dimensional structure of these protein machines. And for proteins, their function is intrinsically linked to their three-dimensional structure. One of the ways in which we like to, or try to visualize this machinery uh, is using uh, cryo-electron microscopy. Many possibilities for young scientists like Magdalena Fierle. Here at Max Planck, uh, the only thing that really limits you is actually biology by itself. I come to my boss and I tell him, hey, you know, wouldn't it be nice to do it with this? And he says, yeah, do it. So here the question is not if it's possible, but when it's possible and do it right now. And you just have to keep struggling with the biological side, not the technical side, which is like the best environment to do science, I think. Andre Lupas and his department are working on protein design, a field that will make a huge impact on our future. My department is the Department of Protein Evolution, and we're interested in every process that leads to changes in proteins. We have made exponential progress in our ability to build living systems or systems that behave like living systems. And so, in my opinion, uh, being able to design proteins more and more accurately uh, involves getting to the point where we can design their functionality. When we had this incredible breakthrough in protein structure prediction last year, I started talking about how this would impact us in the future. And now, half a year later, I have to say, the future is upon us. The kinds of things I was extrapolating, which people said, oh, that sounds almost like science fiction, they're already here. Ralf Sommer's research is about how biological diversity is generated. For that, his department uses a special model organism. We are using nematodes as a model system to understand the role of developmental plasticity for evolution and for the generation of novelty. And we have a very special situation that our nematode can produce two alternative mouse forms. And we are interested to understand how the environmental factors feed in in controlling this developmental decision. We want to understand the molecular mechanisms and we want to understand what the long-term role and significance of such processes is for evolution. So our aim is now that we understand the developmental switches and the complete gene regulatory network that we can now test all the different aspects of plasticity associated evolution because it is important that plastic traits will not stay plastic forever and sooner or later during the course of evolution they will be genetically assimilated or canalized and that is one of the current research uh, focuses that we have to understand how how does such a canalization process really occur and what are the associated molecular mechanisms? The Department of Molecular Biology. Detlef Weigel faces future questions with his cooperation project, Pathocom. In Pathocom, we want to understand how 
communities of pathogens take over a host. So we all know about pathogens attacking uh, humans or plants or worms or beetles and, and whatnot. The important thing is that the pathogens often do not come alone. Uh, and the pathogens either can help each other or they can antagonize each other. And so we want to understand uh, what are these forces of competition and cooperation among pathogens and then also pathogens and other microbes. So in the future, where biology um, hopefully will move to that we not only um, dissect uh, things and uh, take them apart, but that we will move to an understanding where we can actually predict what will happen in the future. One thing that I'm really happy about here at the Institute that there are quite a few groups who are interested in this relationship between hosts and the microbes that live in and uh, on them, from Ralph Sommer and his nematodes to uh, Ruth Lay uh, with uh, humans and mice, and then of course Anna McCann with her uh, uh, kiwi fruit plants and the um, pathogens. And uh, Honor's uh, program is actually a great blueprint for the kind of work that we also want to do. So I'm really super happy that we were able to recruit her to the Institute. Anna McCann's research group established a new model system in the greenhouse, kiwi plants. The primary focus of our work right now is understanding how diseases emerge in agricultural contexts. It's a lot of hiking out into the field, sampling plant tissue, uh, returning to our mobile lab. We've established an inoculation system that allows us to screen a high volume of isolates on a large number of plants. The experiment we have running in the greenhouse right now is trying to understand how these isolates we've collected in agricultural environments and from wild plant populations differ in their ability to infect specific host plants. Our institute is a huge team and we are ready. Ready for new questions, for novel approaches and for the future. What I'm looking forward to in this institute is to start seeing the overlapping concepts and, and the, the overlapping biology and to, to start to flesh out more our, our understanding of, of biology so that we're not just looking under the, the lampposts of the model organisms of the past, but broaden it to, to really get a much fuller understanding of biology and at, at different levels of organization. We all know that we are living in a time of uh, global change. We are faced with an enormous set of um, challenges. We need both engineering and biology to solve these challenges. And I hope that the knowledge that we are generating here about the biological and natural world here at our institute will uh, make concrete contributions to address several of these challenges. And that's really what the Max Planck Society is about, doing something that cannot be easily done anywhere else.